And we're going to be talking about uh, discussion of the ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act, funds from GrantWorks. But uh, let's see, GrantWorks is not here with us yet. They're not in traffic. And this time they are, they're not behind the track. <laughs> so, yeah, they, so uh, anyway, as you all know, part of our allocation, or our allocation uh, from federal government. <coughs> American Rescue Plan Act was $17,109,931. As you can see on the chart, their grant works fee is about uh, almost $600,000 for their work that they'll be doing on this remainder. And we have to work with is $16.5 million. I know we have half of that at the bank right now, correct the way. And uh, here's how this works we don't want problems with the federal government on how we spend this money. And uh, I know in the past, and Christy, you're here, do we audit ahead of time or we'll audit at the end of the time? That's the compliance review for the first half that we've gotten so far yeah. when we start spending it. And then they'll release the second half after that compliance review is done and then they'll do it the very end. Okay, all right. So compliance review at first before we get rolling. But now we have to figure the second round. Yeah, okay. So we only have half the money first. We get the other half after we get the first half spent. So uh, what can we use it on? That's the question. By the way, Matthew, that's the way I understand it. Angela, okay. What can we use the funds on? And we had some pretty good outlines uh, in the act itself that explains what uh, would be compliant. So, uh, Angela, you want to talk to us about it or? Um, well. um, I will say up front that some counties, I want to make this clear because some people think that some of this money can be used um, with less restrictions. And there are some counties that qualify to use their money with less restrictions. Uh, there's a revenue loss calculation that you complete um, when you get these funds. and. Um, we did not qualify for any revenue loss. It uh, doesn't mean we didn't have any revenue loss, but by their calculations, uh, they do it all based on um, three years of prior information off of your financials and the projected growth and average growth. We've had a lot of growth in this county. And so we didn't qualify for that type of use of this money. So we have to stay with them the stricter guidelines as to how we can use it. Um, because you may hear other counties say, well, we spent it on this, or we spent it on that. With that doesn't mean we can qualify to spend it on those things. One thing in our office, we want to make sure that every county stays out of the ditches with this money. We're going down the middle of the Yeah. Can we split it four ways and use it for ditches? <laughs> <laughs> Good try. Good really try. So you're telling me no comfort. Anyway, what uh, is there in the, in the outline there, Angela, for some of the uses? Uh, plainly we have that before we go. It's probably in here somewhere. I didn't yeah. bring it because the grant works for me that we're paying. We have her presentation. We can look through it. Yeah, yeah she actually has it on through there. I know it's available on the TETA website under the American Police Funding tab. I have it. It's on page two of their breakdown. Well, we got to it to the next page. Can we go to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, allow the uses. 
supporting public health expenditures, responding to negative economic impact, premium pay for essential workers. We're, we're not going to use that for that. Okay. Now, that, that goes into what they're talking about. It's an issue they're talking about. Essentially, back pay, which it contradicts state law, and I'm kind of a state employee, de facto state employee, and I'm more concerned about state law than that, federal law. So, we're not going to go into that. So, the discretion is essential. What do you think? Yeah, yes. Green paper, essential work, yeah. scratch that. Then the revenue laws, we already said we're going to scratch that. So, now we're down to investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. And we have talked extensively about the broadband infrastructure simply because that is something that's lacking in the county. Um, you know, after we had the uh, the COVID business <laughs> going on, and the school districts were screaming for all the help they could get, so kids could be uh, have their education, you know, at home and not in the school itself. We got off of the problem about the kids being in the way of even logging in to any kind of internet service. So we started talking about this broadband infrastructure. Uh, I was in the cities, I know Dayton is doing a uh, high speed internet in the city. It's not in the outside of the city, it's not in the unincorporated areas. Um, you know, there is other services, ATT, I think Xfinity or some other ones that are still. Around, but we're looking at outside of the city. In other words, Bayside, Devers, Harden, Raywood, uh, Raywood, yeah, Romeo, yeah, Kenneth, Romeo, 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 I hope not that one. They are. They're, they're like, as we speak today. I live between Ames and Raywood, and I absolutely have no providers at all out there. Yep. Besides running off the rise tower and running off of stuff out there. We know how that works. Carrier pigeon. Yeah, carrier pigeon. Yeah, gotcha. Anyway, that was what we were looking at was the, uh, the internet part, the uh, broadband infrastructure. Uh, the investments in water and sewer, you know, that the water, I know, uh, Clint, we talked about that with some cities that have inferior water supply systems that we've had big issues with. Uh, hey, Lake of States is one of them. Yeah. That's you. You had an opportunity to review this? Yeah, a little. And I'm sitting on some uh, uh, other meetings too. We're, we're got a little bit more in the nitty gritty, but don't get me too far afield. I won't be able to tell you. If you don't mind, you're going to plan for me to respond to negative economic impact. This is the first I've seen that. So that is, uh, my understanding is that's uh, about um, uh, local governments doing short-term loans for those who are, their businesses were negatively affected by yeah. the coronavirus. That's something I think we ought to. Mm -hmm. Give me your version of it, Dwayne. I mean, you start getting in a lot of gray areas. I mean, you got to do means testings and things like that, mm -hmm. which you know might not look, might look fine to us as far as the means testing. But you get a, you get somebody in Washington D.C. and office for doing that, and they might say that's not that doesn't meet the means test, and then we're on the hook to reimburse it. Yeah, one thing I'd recommend we scratch it. Yeah, I think we're making this as clean. I mean, where there's no uh, gray area mm -hmm. and spending this money because you know they fall into us and they spend the money and it doesn't meet their standards and guess who's liable it's us i agree and there, there are a lot of rules on uh, uh, how to qualify uh, applicants for that and, and and good rules that you would expect to have to, to make sure that you know a person minority status or or any status. I asked the question because this is the first I've seen it. Oh, okay. we'll discuss it just a little bit. From what this we is have, the first I've seen it. A lot of the larger larger counties um, 
how to go out and hire temporary staff, the first round, the first round of CRF funding. And I, I feel like even from one of the conferences and talking to a lot of the other counties, that was, it, it's more geared for people that have much higher staff and much higher, uh, they, they really just had to go out and hire temporaries and get people in there. Now we do have grant works, but um, I don't think that we're gonna go that direction. I don't see any counties our size that I know of that are that are going through that because like they said, you have to vet all these people, um, they have to apply, you have to have strict guidelines and regulations. Um, and I believe what Grantworks was gonna come do, she was supposed to come and present to you some of the uh, areas that have been talked about. <laughs> anyway, some of the areas that they, are, uh, that they have talked about, uh, things that we would qualify for, like broadband. Um, there are some other ones we've asked them to look into because we want some clarification on them. And um, we're still waiting on some of that. Judging from the way the CRF money went out the first round, this thing is a work in progress. It is probably changing uh, often. Uh, they're probably adding things to it often. Um, the, the most recent, I think, FE2 probably came out in July. I'm not sure if there was one since then. Uh, so we have until 2020. We, we have to decide what we're going to do with the money by 2024. We have until 2026 to actual, actually spend the money. And their suggestions at this point were not even to like budget an amount. They were just look at your broad projects, see which one you think you might want to fall into. Uh, they said most of the counties that they're working with are in the same position we are. We have this money and we want to make sure we spend it properly and want to know all of the uses that we can use it for before we just jump off into uh, some plans. So, you're so in, what's, what's your indicating? We have up to 2026. Just yes. one. Okay, so what you're indicating also is that if we decide to go full blood run, okay, we need to, we need to. We need to get off high cotton right quick. Sure. Well, they, yes, because they've also allowed for the pre planning of that and all the stuff that that involves. Yeah. But we don't have to put it all towards one thing. You know, we can we can spend it in different areas also. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all to one place. Um, because we know even, uh, even here, we're going to have internal, we have already have some internal county expenses that are coming up uh, that have to do with COVID um, and just our response to that. So that's also a consideration of. You know what the county is funded for itself um but she was going to i think they were going to come and just give you some outlines and guidelines of what other people are spending it on and if you have yeah, we're not doing a decision like no. i don't know if you have any specific yeah. questions of things well, you could spend it on but i'm sure that we would just get them to know and let them evaluate them and see if that's those are possible things we had a, a conference not too long ago at Artesian Lakes, and one of our speakers was Senator Robert Nichols. Robert Nichols just sponsored a bill that has to do with rural broadband. Yes. Um, they're setting up a commission that's going to set up standards. They have to make sure that all the vendors that we hire to put in this broadband are, you know, <coughs> yeah, they're, they're being certain levels and everything. But my understanding, there was going to be some funding available for those initiatives to, as well. And I don't know what the status is on that, but I think that any discussion of broadband should include, you know, that that area as well, because I think there's other funding, and I think there's also some directives on what we can or or how we should do it coming out of Austin right now. So it's pretty fresh. This is federal, yeah. Right. Yes. Well, here's broadband is like. Because the cost of broadband is like, from my understanding, it makes ten to twenty thousand dollars a mile. Just something, just Google told me. Mm -hmm. And there's but, yeah. various levels of, of transmission that they're supposed to, you know. There's a lot of technical stuff to it, is my understanding, and that the state is putting together this commission. It's going to dictate the standards that we have to meet in order to install it. And I guess what I'm saying is be careful yeah, because sure. when you allow for at t to come in and sell us something low level and then, you know, the state comes yeah. in and then we have to spend more money. To, to is the state going to dictate what we do with federal money? No. No, they're going to dictate how we, how we, how the broadband is supposed to work in rural areas. Okay. There's a commission that's going to set standards <laughs> that we have to meet in implementing broadband in, in rural areas. And that's why I'm saying we have to be careful to make sure that we're, you know, we're using 
um, those standards in any anything we buy. Okay, so um, that will go back to grant works, which is why we hired them. Mm -hmm. Right. So they will have that so, all that. At twenty thousand a mile, what does that uh, calculate to roughly? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I already know what uh, they've experienced so far. Just you know, for their uh, day checks, internet service for the town, aren't they about about nine million? Yeah. Yeah. Seventy eight hundred miles. Uh, Seventy eight hundred miles of the Eight hundred miles for the entire county. So I don't know. That's a high number. That's yeah. like I say, that's what you're doing. Yeah, it could be 2,000. Yeah. We have a few local contractors. In fact, yeah. I think Randy Meat yes. is hard and heavy in the Dayton area doing that yeah. work over there that we have more numbers to go by. Well, the senator did say there would be additional funding and they're <clears throat> securing additional funding. So. I, I've even heard rumblings, and I haven't looked at it, that the other federal bill that they're fighting over right now, the infrastructure bill, could have broadband funding in it as well. So I think there's going to be some other options also. I'm just throwing that out there because I've been mm -hmm. sitting and hearing a lot about rural broadband lately. Again, it's not, this isn't our only option, and this isn't the only thing. I mean, we need to we need to make sure we're really doing it right, because yeah. this is a big deal. Angela, what was the other option you had? Everybody was at home, and there were school issues, you know, school. Uh, a lot of people come to the city hall for internet access, children to do to the to do their schoolwork. So the question came up, and it's a it's a hot topic for our city. It's a lot of communication, a lot of buzz around internet, high speed internet, as it is with all of the residential areas, you know, that don't have it. So I uh, kind of took the lead on looking into what what it would take to do a grassroots project for the city of Ames and just to kind of see what was going on around the county regarding those types of projects. So we all hear what happens with Mont Bellevue, they put in a project, um, Dayton is putting in a project. There's some high speed spots, I think, here in the city of Liberty. Um, and was just kind of inquiring with what was out there and what was available for Ames. So that's whenever we found out that there was 17 million that was awarded to the county. Um, and broadband may have fallen into that slot. So there's a lot of opportunity out there for Ames. And um, there's also opportunity you know, that comes to the county. But we're just kind of exploring what's available, what's out there, just kind of um, uh, make sure that the, the request isn't going mute upon right. the citizens. So you really, you're, y'all your biggest focus is going to be on broadband, correct? It's, it's broadband. I mean, that's a hot topic right now. It's broadband. Yes. That's what, that's what we have to aim toward. So. But y'all also have a lot of issues with your water. Yes. We do have water. It's, it's, a, it's a private entity. Uh, what are you talking about? Flood? Or are you talking about? No, I'm talking about the sea water. Sea water. Total yeah. private. Yeah. Yes. I don't think this, this uh, includes flood waters, it, no. but it does include. Which it did, but they wouldn't make a drop in the bucket. No, no. No. But this does address water and sewage and broadband that I don't even know how we would handle Do we help cities? Is this just for rural areas? Is this for? Cities got their own money. Yeah, I was going to. Ask a question on that too. They got two hundred ninety-seven thousand. So what are y'all planning to do with that? What was it, Christian? They got two hundred, a little over two hundred ninety-seven thousand uh, for the city of Ames. You know what y'all plan to do with that funding? So we have to actually put a finger on it. I mean, there's several needs. Uh, in speaking with Magellan, which is like an internet installer, um, they do grassroots. They start with the feasibility and then they go up with it. Um, they were the ones that brought to our attention that. Uh, what came down to the county level was also made available to the residents of the county. Okay, so 
in funding, though, you guys have to use your funding first that you were given through the American League funding, and then if it wasn't enough for your project, then you can go to the county. But and you have to spend your funding first before you can come to the county level. What's their timeline, Chris? And, um, I'm not sure what their timeline is because they're going. They don't go to the Secretary of State like the county does through this funding. The city actually has to apply through TDM. Uh, and go through their compliance review and get the funding through there. I do know that Ames has applied for that funding. I've worked with Jennifer the City and Eric Wright with TM. So, but I didn't, I haven't been told what they're going to do with that funding yet. Okay. Would you know what the time, what your timeline is? No, we don't have the timeline yet. So. Okay. <clears throat> and I think this is where a lot of uh, counties, municipalities, cities. I think we're all in the same boat. We're like, okay, we all got some money. What do we do with it? Do we, because uh, I know some, we were told, you know, some of the conferences, you know, broadband seems to be a, a way a lot of people are talking, but they said, Church. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, that that's that 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 probably my next question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I don't know how we work together with everyone, but I think that uh, that's where we really need our third party to come in and start talking about these things because I know a lot of other counties and cities are doing the same. And they're they're just kind of waiting and saying, okay, well, what big project are we going to move on? And like we all know, every Every municipality, a little city, they were all, if they applied for it, they all probably received some funding. So we don't want to step over everyone else that's already trying to plan for their spending as well. But um, I'm sure they're looking to us to see what we're going to do. Yeah. So. Well, that's why we got the conversation. I mean, it's not, it's not burning a hole in our pocket yet. Okay. Right. Yeah. I know we have 11 cities in the county that were funded through this, this funding. Okay. On top of what the county got, there's 11 cities. Then several of them got over a million. Good. What about the uh, public health expenditures? You know anything about that, Mr. Crawford? What about them? I have to use the screen. So just we'll just let that take a look. It's the next slide. Okay. Um, I know we're visiting with Chief Kidd. Um, Hospitals, indigent health care, nursing homes, several of them fall under the public health expenditures under that talking last week as now. Okay, eligible uses COVID-19 mitigation prevention, uh, public health and safety staff, expenses to improve the design and execution of health and safety programs, behavioral health care. Well, that's good health for us. <laughs> Uh, federal expenses, disparities, and public health outcomes. Okay. You must show a tie back to the COVID 19 public health crisis or a mitigation for a future event. Lord knows we don't need a future event. So, uh, I know the, um, the girls, the hospital girls, they were at the conference too. They can talk to you about Chief Kidd and what he, his conversation. He had a big, huge conversation in general session discussing this funding. The uses of it and stuff, um, talking to the medical staff. Would, know, would y'all like to come up and enlighten us a little bit what you learned? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. I'm running the LLC. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, so we did attend uh, the Cetra conference last week. Um, she did have a lot of good insight into us. We talked to a lot of networking with other counties around there and their hospitals, their public health, their, uh, their nursing homes, whatever, all of them, they already received funding for this. One neighboring county of ours told me, I went to commissioner's court, stayed in my case, and in two weeks I had $9 million. A much larger county than us, I believe, right? Montgomery. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I forgot how many millions they got. Right. Mm -hmm. they, well, they got about 117 million total for their county because sure. they didn't get a lot more. But, you know, just the penance of that would be great for health care in the county as well, for the nursing homes, for the indigent care program, everyone. We're all hurting. This has been a big financial hit to all of us. Um, you and I have already had a conversation, um, Judge Knight, about this. Um, and it's just, you know, we're just trying to recover mm -hmm. right now and all the expenditures that we have for this. And I'm sure that it's been a burdensome, burdensome mm -hmm. to everybody else that's tried, you know, in the county to get through this big <coughs> COVID crisis that we just went through. And, and you know, we've done a great job. Uh, we we struggled just like everybody else, and we're glad to finally get some breathing room again. But I, I would like us to be considered all of the healthcare agencies within the county to be considered for some of this funding. I agree that you know the internet is important for the students and the remoteness of some of the areas out here, but I, I think that we need to be considered in that as well, not just the hospital, but all healthcare providers. Yeah. Sure. And that's just it. But we will consider it. But if the other side of this, get grant works here to help us to consider it. Because we want to do this correctly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Judge, can I? Yeah. Come on up. Uh, under energy healthcare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since we were mentioned. Well, there it is. Yeah. It's big letters. Um, I'll, I can go on my central email line real quick before this. Um, I'll give it to you. <laughs> The charges that we've already incurred. So, um, just want y'all to take in consideration that these charges continue. Um, for indigent health care, of course, we've been, uh, you know, paying COVID diagnosis codes all through the whole COVID crisis. Um, under the Medicaid fee schedule through the state, a lot of the COVID um, diagnosis CPT codes were not payable um, because the providers were actually been, they were able to get reimbursed by the state directly. Yeah. So now that the county is um, in allocated money, those codes are freed up now and we're actually able to pay those codes now. So we have been paying those. Um, and as the bills come in, we pay all of our providers, whatever the Medicaid fee schedule tells us to pay, and they are being paid. What we'd like to do from the COVID funding or reimbursement is reimburse the county funds for what we've already paid out. So we're actually paying ourselves back. Um, and that's what we you know, need to do as far as paying um, paying ourselves back for what we've already incurred. So so right now, 16,000 roughly is what you've incurred. As, as of now, um, we have charges coming in consistently. Um, we have, now that we have to, we are actually gonna have to start providing the COVID test for all of our inmate population. COVID test? Yes. Those are not free more on Christy can get those anymore. What's the cost of the county? I have one bill here from Southern Health Partners of one month, and it was close to five thousand dollars. You know how many? How many? Uh, yes, it's pages, pages and pages of prisoners. Okay, what do you Mr. Penny. Yes. What just one one job? Um, on this invoice, there are about fifty-five dollars a piece. Uh, the issue is, though, and you know, when they're incarcerated, you have to test them, get the positive result, then you have to treat them. Which normally, if they go in and out, that's our bill also. But then you have to retest and retest. So you know, you, mm -hmm. you can move the population around where they're not in quarantine. So we test a little bit more in the in the jail because of that situation. We can't, you know, have a positive test would result in confinement. Yes. And, uh, Yes. Isolation or, yes. or the, just creating more yes. cost to the county. Yes, sir. 
And that was, you know, just one month. Um, the problem is, is we can never project in medical. We, I can't throw a number out there and say, we need this much allocated. We just never know what that would be. Like for, for the month of August, we requested $5,000 just in tests. That wasn't any medical bills that we incurred as far as the, the patient, the inmates going out, staying in the hospital, seeing other providers, getting their medication, anything else they, they would need. Um, so I just ask y'all to take in consideration with that fund that you block off some of that funding to make sure that we are paying ourselves back what we are putting out for our inmates and our indigent population. And, you know, as soon as we pay them, we, we have been tracking them. We have them to turn in. Um, that way we can get that reimbursement back. So it's, you know, you kind of have to judge how much we would need. <coughs> but it's kind of like with my budget. I have, just because I get it, don't mean I, I can spend it. I have to just let it sit there and see what to do with it as we get it. Just it. <coughs> okay, that's good consideration. But yeah. at least we do get to pay ourselves back. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do spend it and get it back, so that's, that's a good thing for the county. Thank you, Ms. Penny. Thank you. Okay. So we have, uh, y'all, you want to run down the next one just to look at it? Public health projects. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Public health and safety staff enforcement public health orders, public communication efforts. Uh, yeah. But that won't work, Krista, under this one. Right. And talking to Chief Kid last week, it's that radios and towers are not an option for this funding. Right. Well, sure we should get that. Yeah. 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 yeah, that would be a nice idea. Well, I, I mean, all the everybody's first responder I know is in bad shape. Radio communication. Yeah. I think Chief and Better, I think y'all have the end of his life. Yes, sir. 12,000. That's the majority of it. Yeah. Okay. Go to the next one. Yeah. Behavioral health care, mental health treatment. There you go, Matthew. I like that one. Uh, substance misuse treatment. Well, okay. And other behavioral health services. Hotlines across the interventions. Uh, <clears throat> that might work a little bit there in the dispatch. Okay. Services or outreach to promote access to health and social services. <laughs> payroll expenses, fund recovery, full payroll, and covered benefits, costs for employees, or operation units, or divisions primarily dedicated to COVID response. I know that we can't just turn them back around and pay people that were off during the time, but you know, like at my barn during COVID, we did a split shift. The county continued to pay these hands while they were basically off. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that the county can recoup some of their money on, on this? You know, I believe every department <coughs> sent people home to keep from infecting the entire staff. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, because I remember kind of having that question come to mind when, when we were looking at this the first time. But that's, I think that's a great grant works question. Yes. Yeah. To, I mean, you know, if, if there's any way to capture that, that's a great idea. Well, this taxpayer money that we have spent during this COVID. Okay. Negative economic impact. I don't know what we can say. Assistance to unemployed workers. <laughs> well, your larger counties can do that because they got a massive injection of funds. Uh, and affected households. 
assistance to businesses, rebuilding public sector capacity, exacerbations of pre existing disparities. Okay. Still got to show a tie back to public health crisis. Um, and look at the quoted reasonably proportional. Yeah, the negative yeah. impact. Yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, Caitlin, is that you? Yes. Well, come on up and visit with us. How are you doing? Doing good. I'm so sorry. Like, uh, where would you like me to be at? We <laughs> can kind of look in through your slide and discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think it would be? For those of y'all that are curious, Caitlin's with uh, Grant Works. Yes. And so we've been discussing a lot of the items over here. The other side of it is we're just speculating right now. So we're going to pay the four directions for you. This booklet does contain the PowerPoint as well. So y'all can warm this up as much as you want. Okay. Also, does contain some other information. Such as uh, NOC supplementation of expenditure codes. And uh, I there's a couple of other things as well. Uh, yeah. Mr. Trey, hey, come up and get you one of these booklets and go through with us. <clears throat> and anybody from the hospital district, you want to raise your hand? Okay, yeah, get up. Uh, and Penny, raise your hand. Yeah. Christy, you need more or you got it memorized? Uh, okay. All right. You want to start from the first? I mean, we got time. Yeah, I can see this was up till four o'clock. So, all right. Uh, let's see where we got. I think we're about halfway through it. Okay. Take a look, Cal. He's back to the first slide where yes, we're talking about broadband. Or I see the internet room. That one right there? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Did you have any particular questions about Yeah, that? Uh, yeah Mr. Trahan is here in, from Ames. He was curious about the uh, broadband infrastructure part. Okay. Because they did receive a little bit of funding for AIDS, but then again, right. it's not near enough to cover what they wanted. Right. And would ours be able to maybe tie into theirs? Should we go that direction? You, you are allowed to do that. Yes, that's not a problem. Um, you can, you know, either um, ask them to submit, you know, what they plan on doing, how much it's going to cost, kind of like a work plan. And um, with that work plan, it will be uh, how much, uh, like, milestones to get kind of like reimbursed for the cost or you can just submit it on their behalf. It, either way works fine. Um, that, you know, you can say, oh, we're going to uh, assist you with 500,000 or power, you know, or we'll say we'll cover up to 25% of all the costs. Either way is perfect. <coughs> um, there's a lot of uh, leeway with that. So, um, you know, you are allowed to, you know, assist other communities within the county with whatever projects or allowed through our so they say communities are these incorporated cities or just settlements? Either one. Either Both of them are allowed. Throw back here. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of questions. Yeah. Well, you know, the incorporated cities do have funding to make this of their own. So that was the other side of it, but still uh well, we trying to be fair. We have a lot of incorporated cities in Liberty County that use assistance and also water and sewage mm -hmm. yep and y'all are able to assist them with water sewer broadband any of that you are able to assist them with that uh for instance grimes county uh is in discussion with helping water death uh, or even not even the town but the town has a private water company they're assisting the private water company with getting their updates to their water system so you you are also allowed to do that if that is something y'all are just Grimes County, Greg. We've been there. Yeah. Depends on what type of public communications is. Um, so, yeah, why don't y'all repeat that question again? Or answer if you would. I just wanted to 
I just asked if she wants like other clarification of public communication based on like that. Like Chris said, you know, that was out. So I just wanted to see what the interpretation was. Like tap towers or communications, um, emergency radios, uh, comm stations. Yes, actually, emergency. multiple communities that I'm personally working with. For instance, Rust County towards the uh, northeast uh, Texas mm -hmm. is interested in doing a lot of radio towers. Um, we do have have a couple of counties in the town as well that are interested in doing, you know, the, the radio systems as well. And it would fall underneath these guidelines. For the public communication, I believe it's underneath uh, public health expenditures, if I'm remembering. Yes, underneath the, the public health projects, that was where it would be classified under. Now, when you start tying into the broadband, for instance, West County wants to do uh, connect their radio tower by broadband because they don't have that infrastructure. That would be classified as a separate project. So that broadband in particular would follow the investments in water sewer broadband. So the radio tower specifically fall in public health expenditures as a public communication effort. So let me ask you a question. I'll just talk about it. Let's say we decide we're going to broadband. Okay. And I'm just throwing a number out there okay. throughout the county. And we're looking at 12,000, 12 million. Okay. All right. And we have a remaining five left. We can use that on other projects. Absolutely. Okay. You can use up to the sit, um, whatever you can find to use it for, and it is allowable through. The guidelines set here, absolutely, you can use 100%. So we can split this up. We don't have to spend it all on yeah. one. Correct. That's why we want to get throw all this out there and let you have all these ideas of the things that it can be spent on <coughs> because there's no limit. You know, so we can use limiting you is the money. Me and a half for towers and radios. Mm -hmm. Right. So much for healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so much for broadband. Just be keeping it up and getting half of it. You have half of it in the bank now. And we're not going to get the other half until year. Next year, I think it's around July. I'm not quite sure of that date, but I know it's next year. So we'll get the last half next year. The thing I want to ditch, which is to get that lay in the ground between that next year. Anyway, okay. We just have to commit the funds by 24. Correct. And then finish spending yeah. them by 26. Correct. Uh, some of the ladies from the hospital were here and uh, they had questions about okay. uh, assisting in funding with them. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Peter, hey. I'm the CEO of Hospital. Okay. So Come on up this way a little bit. Because we're great again. We have to get you on the recording and we can't hear you right back there. So. Yeah, great can't hear you anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, first, I want to thank y'all for the opportunity to come and ask questions. I appreciate hey, yes. that. Thank you. Uh, so we do not have an ICU in our facility, yet we had to hold ICU patients for more than a month. As a result of that, we had to buy additional respiratory equipment, higher respiratory therapists, and ICU nurses. Um, those were at a crisis rate, which was very high. I'm sure you've heard there was a nursing shortage because most nurses are in the former agency um, in the crisis facilities. Um, is that something that we can apply for to get yes. rid of for the uh, because things? you're because you're not a uh, county owned hospital, you don't have to own the it, correct? Hospital. We are a nonprofit hospital district. Okay, that, that would still be kind of an independent. Uh, so from there you um, uh, do as mentioned, you would create a work plan discussing all the needs that you uh, want to you know build an actual IC unit in your hospital. If it is buying the machines, if it's you know buying supplies, you know assisting them getting those nurses, all of that, each part would be classified as a different expenditure category, but it is all allowable through ARC. Um, from there, you would create a work plan discussing that, uh, you know, detail the cost of each part and submit it to the town, and they would say, okay, we're going to fund all of it, half of it, you know, X amount, so on and so forth. But yes, that is allowable. Um, we would just need a detailed list of what you might want to do. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, we've got the bills, so we'll get all that together. Thank you. Y'all think if we're looking at percentages, like what to say, 20% on healthcare, 50% high speed internet. Uh, 
whatever you know, radios. water uh, radios, ten percent on radios, fifteen percent. That give us. Well, it also got to show the power. Yeah. Don knows, and I know. We don't have the best radio communications up on North. I know. Power and aim is technically condemned. Power and aim is technically condemned right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, greatly needed, you know, for fire department, sheriff department. Absolutely. I know we have the visit, it just gives us an option. I know we have the room, and it's been already planned the location at the new sheriff's department tower. Yeah, there is one there. <coughs> Should we at this point be looking at the city wide, or we should just be looking at the area we're going to spend money and then? I think we'll add, be both of those. And then yeah, ask for uh, plans that they you know, pick uh, the different organizations that ask specific what they want in their plan, what to do with it, and we'd have to evaluate it, determine yeah, how much we're going to spend where. I think a good thing would be to try to make you know broadband. Everybody, y'all agree on that. I would kind of maybe get an idea of how much it costs to run the broadband per mile and how and areas so I would be interested in running the broadband. And see what we have left over. To to see, yeah. <clears throat> see what y'all squeeze everything I want to do. But I'd like to look at all the options and to see what you know we'll evaluate. Maybe some other things that uh, just try to running more than the broadband. <laughs> I, I, what are the deadlines on this? When when would people need to submit their can we get funding, you know, ideas? I mean, what what are the deadlines we need to be looking at on all this? Really, the only two main deadlines is you have to have it. Obligated by twenty four and twenty three point six. Yeah. So there's so you guys you guys can, then can set deadlines and how you want to proceed. Yeah, that's what we can set a deadline to have people present their case for their money. We're gonna evaluate it. Sure. Get everybody your question of one. Element, yeah. So look at them. The, what they requested and the justification for it. Yes, for spending. So does that mean that if for like energy and healthcare, if we don't, if we allocate twenty five percent or whatever, if we don't spend all of that money, how can it be moved or can it be? Let's say these aren't set in stone, so they can they can change it. Okay, so but we still would have until twenty twenty six to move that to money be. or spend that money. No, that would definitely be by twenty twenty four. So. If it's not obligated and you haven't, you decide, oh, we can't use all this money, then it that's gone. You know, yeah. yeah. So that's why it's highly recommended if you can find some, something to use it for in, in that particular project. Well, it has to be and, obligated yeah. by 2024, correct? I do recommend y'all some path that y'all are thinking of, you know, get a list of project ideas, ideas that y'all want. If y'all have estimates for those projects, that gives us. Know how much do we have left? And then, then y'all can start prioritizing. Okay, this is the number one. This is an absolute must get done. Well, one one right down to tell you is actually it's going to be penny getting paid back. Yeah. That's first. Yeah. And the second is going to be uh, first responder communications somewhat. And Kristen, ease up here and talk to Caleb about what she talked. Yeah, we have conflicting yeah. answers on that. Yeah, <laughs> with, uh, with uh, Chief Kidd. And what Tina said, come on. Well, I um, had a conversation with Chief Kidd with Tina last week over the radio communications and the towers. And if they, if we could not show a loss of revenue pertaining to that, then we did not qualify to be able to use that for that type of project. Not from what we are going with, um, but you should be able to use it through public communications. So that would be the public health expenditure. So well, when I leave here, I'm going to call Chief Kidd. Yeah, what's the yeah. conference? Because I got the, I got the information she did from another conference, mm -hmm. and so I had asked her to review the statutes and show me where it says we can do it just to make 
Yeah, there were certain things to be able to tie it back to be able to cover it under this funding and the different scenarios we discussed in the conversation, we said they would not be approved. So well, and that's what your slide says. We have to tie it back to COVID or mitigating yeah. future events. So right. you know, that's yeah. If you can show you, you know, if you're having an increase of calls due to COVID or during the COVID timeline, you know, that would be allowed to have increase of calls you need more radio triggers. Actually, we're in terror of those radios. So that would be a way to tie it back to COVID. So that would be a lot of calls. We just have to see, you know, where's Chief? Hear that? I did. I got I'm, I'll, um, Angel, I'll get with Chief Kidd and, and get I'm gonna make some even if I need to do some Zoom stuff. Yeah. We'll okay, well, let's let's put it this way right now. Let's focus on first getting any some reimbursement. But she has real funds that were expended that are tied back to COVID. We already know that's covered. It's going to be. You can go with that until the cows come home and the cows are going to win. Okay. Now, the other side of it is on this uh, public communication part. <clears throat> there is a real need right now. And then we're not by any means going to spend $17 million on no. You know, you might spend 10%, 1.7 million. Yeah. Right away, I'm also going to put in the uh, equation. We need towers on. Yeah. yeah. Well, the towers. Because we're not going to be able to use radio. We don't have towers. Yeah. But our radios are old, and we know yeah. that. And uh, every gospel I know, every sheriff's deputy I know is there. They're total radios at the end of their life. Yeah. Even the radio that Kristen gives me to use here, you know, whatever crisis we have going on, it's already at the end of its life. Yes. Yeah, so, so those in the room that may know the answer to this question on a tower, how far does a tower communications stretch out from the tower? You know, how many towers do we really need in Liberty? Three? I think you're looking at curvature of Earth, and that's going to be 12 miles, 12 miles for every tower location. And but I'm depending on upon the height. Well, it works on, yeah. works on the repeater system. Yeah. 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 So if you have four of the tower, you can have three pairs down. I can pick the sheriff's department based on the system that I'm never on right now. In fact, when we put that system in at Liberty County, Harris County implemented it. Let me kind of piggybacking off that that system of various counties. I had to come into Liberty County at each corner of this county. I had to make sure that I was able to speak to Harris County SO. Is that the repeater from Ames or it didn't matter? Oh, it didn't matter. Okay. It didn't matter. It, you, you had, I had to come into this in Liberty County and at every corner of Liberty County, I had to make sure that they were receiving my transmission. And we have some spots that it did, especially on the north end. In Davis Hill, I'm going to be sad up here. I'm going to be sad. It's going to be sad. Yeah. 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 Well, let's look at those two items now. Because those are, I would say those are priority. But that'll give some time to get the other items that uh, are under discussion. You know, especially the hospital. I think we ought to be ready. I mean, we ought to get I would also encourage James to look at their water. That's getting an idea. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's look at all the we need on y'all's water system. Yes, sir, Judge. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, may I interrupt for just a second? Yes, we'll figure out to make this a clean break and get it done rather than sneaking around back there and mumbling. Can she get her uh, machine or recording sure. machine? And, uh, and then we'll be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> She can't use shorthand anymore. She can't use shorthand anymore. Can join the conversation? Well, sure. No, I got it. Thank you. I think we're wrapping up. Yeah. Give us about five more minutes. I think we're done. Yeah. If that helps you. Well, I don't want to. No, 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 no,
So if you were to put, if the county were to take this money and put, build the infrastructure, whether it's broadband, fiber cable, or tower, or who would own that infrastructure? It depends. So for instance, Russ County wants nothing to do with owning the broadband in particular. So they're having to, you know, they're going to say, oh, we're going to assist you with the cost, but you're going to completely own it. That's part of their agreement that they want to go for it. Sense. But if they wish, if Russ County, for instance, or for y'all, if y'all wish to completely own that, y'all can. Don't be one on it. The okay. way we tell you that. Yeah. yeah, so no, you can put that, <laughs> put that in y'all's, you know, when y'all go to sign a contract with, uh, you know, whoever it is, if it is, you know, cost to have or whatever, you know. You can put in that contract saying y'all will completely call in this line or whoever's going to help the radio towers, anything like that. So y'all can't put that in the contract with that. You know, we don't, we do not want something like this. So we live better. The way we tell me I could live it, right? <laughs> so, so just a thought here. I, I don't know. Uh, because just as I bet broadband companies, they make offer me money if I let them have exclusives. Uh, in a particular section, right. I don't do that. at and T's running it for me already, and, and they do a good job. And so, but they're not bad wrong bank. It comes to hey, we'll run the fiber, and we'll work and we'll put towers up if you, and we'll give you a cut of the bill if you let us have an exclusive in a particular section, which we don't do. But um, I'm sure there there would be an option for y'all to go to you know, Sprint, at t whoever, and maybe get, instead of having to pay for everything with your grant money, is there an option to get them to co-op that cost if they can make a deal? I mean, because that, I mean, if you're talking about spending a lot of money, millions of dollars on infrastructure, maybe you can find someone like at t or Sprint, someone that's looking on their long-term plan of, Building those same towers or towers in those, into those same locations and or broadband in the same areas, but they're just not feasible to do it today because there's not enough hookups to make it. Yeah, that. subscribers. Yeah, right. yeah. So, but, but maybe they would have to eat half the cost or a portion of the cost to help transfer. We're looking into it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, okay. not just allow we would just have to, you know, put out a request for bids and they would have to, you know, bid it out so that it works. About hey, this is you know the section that we are able to commit to for X amount of dollars, um, and then you know their stipulation like twenty percent or whatever number. You know they can put a stipulation like okay, y'all would find out twenty percent of the cost or however much. So okay, for expediency's sake, uh, three things to look at today. Okay. okay, one is the radio communication side. So we're pretty much set. We're gonna look at that. Okay. Uh, reimbursement for pitting for digital health care to come. And before you leave today, I want you to get with Krista. She's right in the back of the room. Okay. And y'all talk about that radio aspect too, because there were some questions, discrepancies on the use, you know, from TDM's version versus your version. I want to get that cleared up. Okay. And also speak to the hospital district ladies okay. and see what we can help with them. And specifically, but give them some direction on what to write down. Okay. They would talk about their use. And then if you have to tell us, uh, our friends from Major here, but they're on board with us on the high school internet anyway, but still, y'all need to talk with her, Mr. Trey, or are you good right now? Or? No, you did a lot of work. You did? Okay. Okay. All right. So those little areas before you go, you know, I'll get, get to Chief Davis. Uh, Leg irons and hold you back. You're yeah. awesome. Okay. okay. All right, that'll work. All right, anybody else got anything today? Leon? No, no, I think we're headed in the right direction. We just need to control our phone. Not do nothing to control. Well, it, we've it's got that time. Set. It's a wiggle ring. Right? It's an asset. Uh, it's going to help us. Hey, we were in. Thank you. Bruce, Greg, anything? No. All right, let's call it a day.